when America was attacked uh, in 9-11, the government uh, worked upon a major initiative to upgrade the resilience and capacity of farm rescue services throughout the country. And indeed, West Sussex was one of those chosen farm rescue services to actually benefit by considerable funding, both in terms of personnel and equipment. The major role of the TRU is very much orientated towards urban search and rescue. Predominantly, it's based upon if terrorists attacked uh, this country, if buildings were blown up or collapsed, or whatever disaster uh, fell upon our communities, the TRU would be at the forefront of our capability in meeting that threat. As well as this, they have a um, capacity at water rescue, which we have experienced within the county over the last few years in terms of flooding, and also high line rescues, where we now have an abseiling capability throughout the county. This together with our ability to go underground, deep beneath buildings to carry out effective rescue has been a great enhancement on the capability that we have as a service. The Technical Rescue Unit is based at Hawley Fire Station and next to Gatwick Airport, considered a high profile target for any future terrorist attack. It is from this small office that the TRU coordinate their day-to-day -day working routines and plan their training in preparation to respond to any emergency incident. The TRU are responsible for a vast range of equipment provided by the government as part of the ongoing response to 9-11. So we have five prime movers, which are the lorries, and which they carry five modules. The first three modules are principally ISO containers, 20 foot long, and they contain a range of rescue equipment. Module 1 has a get to work type principle, so it has initial searching, initial shoring equipment, some light tools for drilling and coring as I've described. Module 2 moves on to the kind of the heavy lift end of things and we've got jacks for example that are able to lift 100 tonnes, 60 tonnes, airbags lifting 132 tonnes. Module 3 is our heavy braking equipment and we'd use that later in the stages when we're having to move large amounts of debris. Module 4 carries the bobcat, which is an essential part and is used for offloading equipment and for moving equipment around the site. And Module 5 carries approximately 9 tonnes of timber, which is used in the shoring of buildings. Crews spend a considerable amount of their time testing and maintaining this equipment in tip-top condition, ready to respond to any emergency. Within West Sussex Fire and Rescue Service, the Technical Rescue Unit consists of a group of firefighters who have specialist skills and equipment and can be deployed wherever and whenever they're needed across West Sussex. They work very closely with colleagues from the Police, South East Coast Ambulance Service and the Coast Guard. At this incident, a man has fallen in the chalk pits and is being treated for suspected back injuries. The TRU have been called in to provide specialist support to paramedics and firefighters. Ah!
Due to the difficult terrain, the Coast Guard helicopter is called in to evacuate the casualty. Training forms an important part of the TRU's working day and is essential for the crews to maintain their skills and expertise. What we could possibly do is affect it is that if we were to have a cableway for whatever reason, that might try to rotate it. Training needs to be as realistic as possible and so the TRU take advantage of any opportunity to train at off-site locations. When they're unable to find suitable sites within West Sussex, the TRU travel further afield. At Kapalkurig in the shadow of Mount Snowdon, the TRU prepare for swift water rescue training. The primary role of the TRU being urban search and rescue, it is in this area they devote the most time to training. Rescuers must assess the nature of the scene and carry out an evaluation for the structure's stability and potential dangers to rescue personnel. The incident commander will also gather intelligence regarding the last known location of anyone believed to be trapped in the structure. My name's John Lacey and this is Tilly. She's a five-year-old Springer Spaniel and we're part of the Technical Rescue Unit based in West Sussex Fire and Rescue Service. And our role going to a collapsed building would be to hunt out missing people that may be trapped in the rubble. So we put Tilly onto the rubble or the collapsed building and she'd conduct a search and she'd hunt around until she found the scent of a live human victim in that pile of rubble. Once she finds that scent, she'll progress through to find the strongest point of that scent and then she'll indicate to me that there's someone there by barking. I then make my way towards her and then give her a toy as a reward and we'll have a good game afterwards playing with the toy, doing retrieving. Once the dogs have identified an area and we're satisfied that uh, this is the area to concentrate on. We're going to mark that as a future reference. We use the system V for victim and then we're going to try to core through and ascertain how many victims are underneath the rubble. Okay, we've had two identifications of dogs here in this area. 
So what I'm going to do is send you in as a technical search team. I'd like you to use one Snake Eye camera and one Delsar. I'd like to go in and explore the voids in that area, locate the casualty and then communicate with them if possible and then get back to me with the results. Following on from that, we would then use our acoustic listening equipment which is currently Delsar. It's a four probe system. We're able to put them around the rubble and then try to use a triangulation system to pinpoint the exact location of that casualty. Fire service, can you hear me? There's no movement on the camera. Okay. No response at all. What the crews are doing now is removing any debris, including steel rods that they use for reinforcing the concrete. This will allow the crews to work in relative safety. Where hydraulic cutters are unable to cope with the larger steelwork, thermal cutting equipment is brought in and used to great effect. Where debris is too large to be removed by hand and cranes cannot be used, the crews have to improvise. Once we're happy with the, the location of a casualty beneath the rubble, we're going to use the coring tools, and that is either a concrete corer or an auger, and that will make a small hole of approximately 50 millimetres, of which we can then put the search camera down. Legs to our right as we look. Yep. Legs don't appear to be trapped. Legs to the left. Two arms. So if we go, we get a triangle. Down here. Yeah. Some rebar in there. The TRU have spent much of their time since 2006 supporting fire crews at what is for them routine rescue incidents within West Sussex. To date, they have never been called upon to use their expertise and skills at a major incident in this country. But. As members of the United Kingdom Urban Search and Rescue Team, they have gained valuable experience attending incidents around the world. Members of the Technical Rescue Unit also perform a key role in the United Kingdom's international search and rescue capability. They can be deployed wherever they're needed across the globe in response to a foreign government's request for assistance in the event of a natural disaster. In September 2009, a powerful earthquake struck the Indonesian island of Java. Within 24 hours, the UK's search and rescue capability was deployed, including four members of the West Sussex Technical Rescue Unit. This was followed in January this year by one of the worst humanitarian disasters in living memory. A massive earthquake struck Haiti. Once again, the UK's search and rescue team were deployed, including six members of the Technical Rescue Unit from West Sussex Fire and Rescue Service. We then uh, ended up, because of our previous experience um, with uh, helicopters and the like, we then were fortunate enough to assist with the aerial reconnaissance and also the uh, medical evacuation of two ladies from a town called Leagan. So we got quite heavily involved in that. But because of that, that was then like the catalyst that gave us the not excuse, but the, the opportunity to go out uh, on several of the recce missions as well. Uh, I mean, we on several occasions went out and about literally in the streets, and what we were trying to do is establish, have you got any pockets of collapse where somebody hasn't actually come and 
you know been and helped and if you have then we'll kind of go about rescues. Is it much the same has it been much the same in other situations like that? I mean I know it's a different country but what you're dealing with it much the same anywhere is it yeah i think so i mean a collapsed structure yeah. regardless of where it is i mean it's the scale of it i suppose is the bit that was it's always more shocking i mean yeah. i thought turkey was big with 17,000 dead and this is now 200 yeah. 200,000 plus dead somewhere and that, yeah. so i mean obviously the scale is the big thing yeah. So the TRU continue their training in the knowledge that another major terrorist attack in the United Kingdom is considered by many as inevitable, and that their skill and expertise will be tested to the limit sometime in the future. In this day and age, it is probably likely that there will be further terrorist incidents. And it's important that crews are well trained and well prepared. And so we spend a large amount of our time training on all the various disciplines, the technical search, the shoring, the breaching and breaking, the working at height, etc. Nobody wants those type of incidents to happen, but because it's likely that they will happen, we want to ensure that we're able to respond accordingly. And so equipment needs to be ready for action, as do the crews. We need special people, special equipment and special training, and I hope that we're able to provide that.